No problem. Are, are, are you kidding me? You are like the uh, the, the the talk of the town because, to be honest with you, I love your cat. Your cat is amazing. I have my cat, Loyalty, actually right beside me now, and she's purring up a storm. She got excited to think that maybe she was going to get mentioned and you guys were going to mention how much you guys love animals. So. Oh, my God. Not only that is because I, I, I see how, how passionate you are when you bring her to the ring and you show so much love. And it, it, it's almost, it, may, it almost makes me want to be a cat lover, the way you, you show love. I got a question for Nightwave. I hope Nightwave likes animals because I actually want to give the guy a Persian kitten for keeping my name relevant. I don't care how much shit the guy talks. I actually think it's kind of cool that he's that obsessed with me. And good, bad, or ugly, you mentioned my name. At the end of the day, I'm going to prove everybody uh, will eventually be a Teddy Hart lover. And that's my goal is to make everybody uh, hopefully happy and understand my points to make you smile right. and clap. Be, be, it's be, a simple, simple job. But, but, Teddy, before you go into that, why, why is it that you want to do this for, for Nightwave? Why, why, what's the problem with that? No, I actually like Nightwave now. I, I actually just got the, I, I kind of felt bad because I had said some things to him and then I realized that I was being a hypocrite and I shouldn't judge anybody. And it would be unfair for me to not know his life story or the situation or some of the things he's been through. And then to call him uh, some derogatory names about drugs he's done, because, you know, most of my friends have probably partied and done almost every drug in the world. So I have to apologize uh, I'm not one to say sorry if I didn't fuck up, but I'm not an ass kisser and I don't expect anything from him except for basically just uh, maybe for him to step on one of my shows sometime and I'll interview him and ask him some questions about his life because I never got to find out anything about the guy because I was so busy trying to blast him and uh, that's not the way I usually do things. So, Was there, was there really any... Um, I, I, I really didn't want to go into this because I, I, I heard the interview... The interview but was there anything to where that you didn't know that this was the 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 precursor to what he wanted to go into? Did you know beforehand that Nightwave was going to go into the whole backstory of all of what's been going on? You know what? It, it's it's my it, it was my well I won't say stupidity, but it was my uh, arrogance and ignorance that. I didn't come prepared for the questions he was asking about, um, uh, we'll say, the situation and uh, a girl who's a mother and uh, she went missing and it's a terrible thing to have anybody uh, missing and the worst thing you can have as a parent is wondering where your child is. I'd rather have a definitive answer if she's dead or alive and uh, I kind of didn't understand the situation I got into and I let my mouth run and I've been uh, guilty of that a few times over the years, probably saying too much, but uh, one thing, if you're a real man, you're accountable for your actions and you step up and say, when I fucked up, I fucked up, or I'd like to do it again, or I hope I can have a retry. And it's not a video game. And sometimes there's no continue and you don't get a second chance, but with, uh, with wrestling and being the sport it is, uh, we get to kind of reset the uh, story every time. And uh, you have a new chance to either make or break somebody or, uh, say sorry or thank you. And sometimes I owe people a thanks or sometimes I owe someone a sorry. And if you're not mad enough to say thank you or mad enough to admit that uh, even some of the greatest guys in the world are incorrect at times, or they um, maybe said something and it didn't come out the right way. And interpretation, something I think is key and uh, perspective and understanding are things I'm working on as I get older. Is it too much? Is it too much that people um, delve into what is wrestling as opposed to uh, your personal life? Is it really too much that uh, they, they really like, really try to micro uh view your your lifestyle is it really become that much to where that your life has now become uh, uh bits and pieces of what is your in ring and out uh, outside of the ring is it, is it really become way too much for you to handle i believe the person i am on the street creates a certain type of uh we'll say we'll say a magnetism or uh an energy field that if I'm a good enough person on the street and I'm nice enough to people and I, I've been very fortunate to be blessed with great parents and a wonderful grandfather and he worked for probably uh, 60, 70 plus years and he said the greatest trick in the world he ever learned was how to kill people and I got kind of scared when he said it. He, he kind of leaned over to me and he said the best way to kill people is with kindness. And that's something I've been trying to live my uh, life after his, 
his lesson and that my grandfather touched more people on the planet uh, than almost anybody. And he was considered a hero. And one of the greatest things my dad said was, when you leave the room, if someone has something positive to say about you, you leave a nice flavor in somebody's mouth. And that's the way you live forever is through other people's positive stories and positive energy never dies. Teddy, you have been considered probably the most talented wrestlers in the business in the past 10, 15 years. And in the world, in the world right? Yeah, sure. And Well, I, I, thank you guys for that compliment. And that's another thing that's an opinion. And I value your opinion. And I always hope to get better and to re-innovate myself. And uh, this next 10 years of my life is to prove that after 40, I think I'm going to be uh, – a more well-rounded wrestler and a better person and more responsible with my decisions and uh, try to spend more time in the ring and in the gym and the less time running my mouth and uh, in and out of jail making, uh, we'll say, uh, incorrect decisions or uh, not following some of the, the uh, United States or Canadian laws of, uh, of conduct. No, but not only that, no, no, and, and you, you've been considered probably the most talented wrestlers that has not been... Uh, I guess accepted or has broken through to the top tier promotions and such. It's like, well, I, I, I have this weird thing that YouTube is the universal channel of wrestling. And that if you want to watch me for free, I never wanted to get paid to wrestle anyway. I always thought it was a dream come true. And it's something I did because my brother died. My brother died of the flesh eating virus when he was uh, 13 years old. And he loved wrestling and I didn't understand wrestling what it was. And I kind of thought it was, uh, hokey and weird and i didn't like that it was uh fixed and when i was a kid my uh my grandfather ran stampede wrestling and it was such a wonderful promotion that i thought it was a shoot and later on i learned what the business was about and i didn't understand the magic of actually going in there and looking like you're killing somebody but both guys are working together to pay their bills and to uh, feed their families and that's something i understood later with uh a lot of uh great teachers like brett and davy and dynamite and owen and Shawn michaels and uh Another guy I don't give enough compliments to is Triple H. I think he cleaned up the business. And I'm not there to get a fucking job or kiss his ass, but I think Vince McMahon's one of the greatest guys on the planet, and he allowed everybody to watch wrestling, and he's allowed competition to to grow again, and he runs a wonderful WrestleMania weekend where everybody gets to wrestle, and uh, all these shows get to piggyback off of his hard work and ingenuity and the ability that he came up with uh, years ago doing a pay-per-view or closed circuit TV and uh, running the very first WrestleMania like an actual business. And from that point on, we all got to eat off his plate and off of his uh, ideas and how he took over the business. And a lot of people said he monopolized things. But to me, uh, whatever he had to do to get there, we're able to watch wrestling on a channel now on a network. And AEW is doing phenomenal. And a lot of the guys from AEW uh, were kids I grew up with or are kids that grew up watching me. And uh, Impact's doing wonderful. MLW is doing fantastic. GCW, another guy, Brett Lauderdale. A lot of guys never really gave him the right respect, but he created a niche market. And uh, these guys out there, to me, are the blood, sweat, and tears of the business. They're the behind-the-scenes guys, the quiet guys that don't really get the pat on the back and they don't get the right credit maybe uh, they deserve. But without them, we wouldn't have a wonderful sport to watch and we wouldn't have something to do called professional wrestling. I wouldn't have the ability to make people smile and clap and boo me and talk shit about me and praise me. And uh, I give somebody an opinion. And an opinion is a conversation, and a conversation is a pretty important thing to do. When someone speaks, you should listen carefully if you want the same respect back. So I'm going to try to be a better listener because I think I'm a pretty good talker. But being a good talker and a uh, better listener are things that uh, my grandfather said are really important. Value your meals, say a prayer, protect the animals, and uh, always value children and women because women, uh, without women, we don't have a planet. And without fucking kids... Uh, we don't have a future. And if we don't educate the kids right in the future, uh, we don't have anything. In this world, we're all connected. I believe Jesus Christ was an alien, and his message was real simple. We're all brothers and sisters on this planet. It doesn't matter what color you are or what religion you are. We all bleed red. We all breathe the air, and we all need the water. And the cleaner the water is, the cleaner the air is, the better the planet is. The better the planet is, the better the world is for everybody to live in. And I want everybody to understand how much I love people. And uh, I want people to be better, and I strive to be a better person because – you guys tell me that, you know what, uh, time and energy are something you guys spend uh, all the time making money, and money allows me to have a purpose, and you guys spend your time and money uh, loving wrestling, and that's why we're having this conversation is because we all love wrestling, yeah. and if we don't love wrestling, then hopefully you'll watch it in the future and learn to understand that this is the greatest sport on the planet. Teddy, do you think that the, the, with your talent that it's, it's gone past because of other wrestlers who should – 
who 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 has gone past you right now because you're you, you are like 10 years ahead of your game. Do you think that you miss your opportunities with uh, probably uh, promotions who who have seen your personal life and didn't want to uh, uh, book you or, or, or contract you? Do, you? do you think that maybe you should be uh, far ahead than you are right now that we're uh, basically what, what, what should be your career right now? You know what, guys? I only tried to make it in wrestling one time. When I was 18 years old, I tried to make it in the WWE. And it was the loneliest, uh, most scary experience I ever had in my life. And I wasn't ready for it. And that was the last time I ever really wanted to be a wrestler. Uh, after that, I, I wrestled for a hobby. And I created an image that I knew would never get me hired. I'm a marijuana man. Well, and well, I always well, have been. You know what? Before, before you continue, you knew that. So was it because you knew that? Uh, it was pure about wrestling, or you just said, uh, I'm going to be the counterculture of what people thought about wrestling? I just think time and money are two things that I didn't have a lot of time, but I had a lot of money, and my dad was very wealthy, and uh, wealth is three generations or four generations of smart decisions and the following a code and waking up in the morning and following a very uh, tight routine and consistency of behavior and uh, discipline. So my discipline wasn't there properly and I, I love to work out, but I didn't want to lift too heavy. And, uh, I took a few shortcuts over the years and, uh, didn't really think that I wanted to be wrestling like Brett did, uh, and seeing my family once a week and traveling the world in an airplane and, uh, basically worrying about blowing my knee out or breaking my neck or getting hurt. Because if you wrestle too much, uh, it's just, uh, consistency and, uh, consistency, to me, if wrestling over and over and over again, something's going to happen and you're going to break down. So I kind of thought by the time I was 35, I'd have enough money and I'd done enough fun things on my life. And I'd hopefully meet a beautiful woman and I would be able to get married. And uh, things happened a little slower than I wanted to. But now at 40, I think wrestling is the job I want to do. And I really want to focus on getting to the gym. And now I have all these friends out there that kind of understand me. And, uh, this is the first year I really wanted to offer my services to the world as a professional wrestler that's in shape. I might get a few new tattoos. I've never got a tattoo before. I might get some piercings. And uh, I love the fact that that's what you're looking forward to is to get tattoos and piercings and shit. I love that. Yeah, I kind of I want to change my image, and I want to be, be something else, and I don't have to worry about my law enforcement friends, and I don't have to worry about uh, my son. He's 18 years old now, and I don't have to worry about him watching me and uh, – my son, when he was uh, 13 years old, I guess he pulled up a YouTube video and I was talking about smoking weed and my son ended up smoking weed and getting himself into some shit and he stole some weed from my, uh, my, my, uh, my ex, my, my ex fiance. And, um, I was happy that he smoked weed and I told him I'd break his neck if he ever did anything else. Like my dad told me, he goes, you, uh, you ever bring anything else in the house, I'll snap your fucking neck or I'll put a bullet in your head. I don't have time for drug addicts or losers in my house and uh, marijuana will tolerate, but you don't really need to, uh, you don't really need to do anything. Let me ask you about that because you are like the first, uh, I think the first wrestler in the past 10, 15 years that is very pro marijuana. You're very, uh, cannabis heavy. What I mean, very vocal about uh, it. yeah, you're very vocal about very it. Vocal, very like. It, should there be like a a policy about marijuana in the wrestling business? You know what? I think with uh, with marijuana, it's to each their own, and it's there to help. But anything uh, done too much uh, has consequences. And I smoked probably uh, way too much weed. And I wasn't completely focused and I didn't understand how the plant worked. And uh, I scared people away on purpose because I just didn't want the commitment of having to be responsible 365 days a year. So I kind of created an image that uh, I knew might be kind of cool, but at the same time crazy. And if I was an investor, uh, I wouldn't have booked me and I wouldn't put me on TV. And uh, I got to wrestle on YouTube and they kept my videos up and a lot of promoters uh, allowed me to wrestle some of their best guys and most of the guys I wrestled I tried to have a five-star match with and pass on my uh my information that my goal in the ring is to make sure you leave safe and you're scared shitless when you walk in the ring because you never know what I'm going to do but we always know we're going to get through it safely and we're going to make sure one thing is uh apparent and that's wrestling is real because time is real and money is real and gravity is real 
and I'm going to try to do something in the ring that makes you remember my name. And if that's something I did that scared people away, uh, I think there's enough guys out there now that realize the Teddy Hart mystique is all about creating a shoot image, which is, yeah, I'm fucking crazy because I climbed to the top ropes, and I think you, you motherfuckers are going to keep me safe. You guys are my bulletproof vest. And the better I am to my fans, the, uh, the better the fans are going to be to the world. And if I can spread that message to make people smile and clap, then what a fucking wonderful thing to say to God. If I ever do happen to pass away, which I don't think I'm going to have any, uh, anything to do with death for a long time, if ever, and with science and technology and all the uh, wonderful doctors out there and uh, innovation and, we'll say, science and God, and, uh, we could probably live forever now in the future. And my job is to live as long as I can, to be as healthy as I can, and to keep as many guys in the ring and uh, motivate as many kids in the future to get into this sport. And understand that wrestling, to me, is the oldest science on the fucking earth. And it's all about two guys or three guys or five guys or a girl or a gay guy or a fucking black guy or a white guy or a Mexican guy getting in the ring and being human and kicking the living shit out of each other. But then somehow those two guys walk away and they have a beer after the show and the fans get to see me sign an autograph. Imagine me. That's what I got to do. I got to sign my name on a piece of paper and someone fucking smiled and took a picture with me. And they told everyone that Teddy Hart was real because I looked him in the eye and I shook their hand and I gave him a hug. Yeah, like that said, makes me if, fucking weird. If you guys don't know, Teddy Hart um, just came home. Um, they, 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 you, you, um, I, I, I need you to explain, uh, uh, if you can, explain, explain as much as you can of what was the arrest about, or not too much, but just to say like what, what was, what was the charges that they said, and uh, well. I, I, I've been open about my steroid uh, use. I've had a prescription for steroids since I was 32 years old, and the WWE was nice enough to put me into a rehab program because I couldn't get off marijuana and oh, tobacco. WWE, oh, they did. They did. Uh, WWE did look out for you. Okay. WWE WWE saved my life twice. I was uh, I was fucked up. I was doing tobacco bong hits. I was smoking a water bong, and I was mixing cigarette tobacco with weed, and uh, it was fucking my brain up. And uh, not going to throw Jack Evans under the bus here, but me and Jack Evans were uh, smoking the water bong too much, and uh, we weren't doing double backflips like Ricochet was, and we were uh, sitting at the same level. We did about nine or ten moves, and we had about ten other ones we really wanted to do, but uh, we basically got busy getting high and uh, enjoying our lives, and we were, in my mind, uh, really, really good, but uh, could have been a lot better, but we didn't understand that too much of anything obviously is uh, not good and tobacco uh with all the chemicals out there i don't know what the fuck is in this shit and it was fucking my brain up so i asked the wwe to help me and i went to rehab for marijuana and tobacco and tobacco cigarettes uh smoked for 10 years smoked cigarettes since i was 13 years old 14 15 16 17 18 chewed tobacco got a little bit of cancer in my lip had to get it cut out i don't tell people that story too much but wow. I had a little taste of that when I was uh, 19. I had to have a small surgery on my lip. I got a scar underneath my mouth to uh, remind me of uh, how hockey players and baseball players and all those guys are probably pretty stressed out after the game because they're playing a real sport and they really get hit and they really get fucking killed and they really do a lot of work because the schedule for most athletes is unbelievable, something I couldn't handle. But I wanted to become better. So I admitted I had a problem and WWE spent probably uh, sixty to $100,000 putting me in rehab. I spent... Uh, a month in rehab with Razor Ramon, and uh, he told me a lot of things about life and uh, perspective and understanding and shutting my mouth and not being a cocky little fucking asshole running around with sparkles in my hair uh, doing backflips and shit. And he uh, called Conan, and Conan said, yeah, the fucker's crazy, but he's a good guy. He's got a good heart. He loves animals, and we're going to tolerate him instead of have him get whacked in Mexico or killed off for being fucking a uh, high spot monkey and making everybody's job harder than it needed to be. They allowed me to exist in their world, and uh, they introduced me to Kevin Nash, and uh, he was another guy who came up to my house, and Godfather was another guy, and uh, these guys were all really, really nice to me, and they gave me a chance to actually talk to them. They spent time at my house as friends, and uh, those are the guys that kind of made me want to get back into wrestling and wanted to clean my life up. So the second time I went to rehab, I still hadn't been able to kick the tobacco, and I promised myself if I ever, ever wanted to get out of this business – alive i would have to quit smoking cigarettes so i started smoking backwards it was a natural leaf and uh yeah. i rolled blunts and i spent over two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> my first year two hundred two hundred guys a, thousand dollars yeah, on man. marijuana and backwards backwards you know what a pack of backwards costs in canada guys yeah. no what? 20 20 23 dollars for a pack of backwards really wow 
I smoke I smoke twenty to forty blunts a day, guys. Can you can you can't you smoke like bamboo or like uh, um, easy wider like those kind of like you can't smoke joints like they're not good for you. Uh, I I don't believe I don't believe a bear in the jungle talking to a monkey and a gorilla and they all wanted to get high. The only thing they could smoke was a leaf. So if the, all all the animals are in the jungle smoking weed, I never knew how to cut bamboo. I didn't have a knife. And I definitely wasn't going to be able to wipe my ass with a zigzag paper. So the only thing I could wipe my ass with and smoke at the same time was a leaf. So I created a fucking backwoods leaf that I thought somebody else uh, spent a lot of time and money in curing this thing. They called it all natural. And uh, after years and years of smoking backwoods, my lungs are still pretty good. My knees are still pretty good. They're a little shaky sometimes when I climb to the top ropes. And I'm wondering if maybe this is going to be the time I get hurt. And I look in the audience and I see some poor son of a bitch in a wheelchair. And he looks at me and smiles and says, don't worry, my friend. We would never do that to you. Ten. All you're doing is trying to make us smile. And right. all I could do, guys, is take my gravity boots and jump off the top ropes and hope to God you guys keep me safe and yeah. talk is cheap. So, you know, you know, Teddy, you've always been awesome. And like I said, every time I met you, we met each other like numerous times. And it's just a weird thing that it's like, for some reason, I thought that you actually knew me. <laughs> it's like you'll see me. I'm like this Puerto Rican albino kind of looking guy. And I'm always worried. I, I always worry about you because you're such a talented individual. And when I hear the stories of what's going on, and you know, uh, what, what, uh, you know, the, the 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 just what what was going on on social media and such, and I always believe that that you were or are uh, uh, a talent that should be on a uh, on a bigger scale. Than where you are right now. Are you okay with that? Are you guys? I look in the mirror. I look in the mirror, and I was so happy that God gave me Maria, and that was all I ever prayed for. Was that all the work I did? I never wanted to be on TV, guys. Otherwise, I would have followed a script. I would have shut my mouth. I wouldn't talk about being an undercover cop, or I wouldn't talk about Freemason shit. I wouldn't talk about fucking thinking I'm an alien or all this crazy. I wouldn't definitely be doing backflip after backflip after backflip for fucking fifty people at a show where if value is, uh, we'll say, something that people want to put. And I'm going to go back to the question of what I got charged for in a second, because I promised I wouldn't fucking answer five questions at once and try to fucking scramble all over the place. So I just, uh, I thought that basically the reward of meeting a beautiful woman that was wrestling related in some capacity would be my dream. And I met my dream girl and, uh, that changed my whole life. It took five years longer than I thought it was going to. I was hoping to meet her five years ago. I actually met Maria four years ago and I, I fooled around with her and bugged her. I, I would marry her right on the spot then. And I thought she was wonder woman. And, uh, three years later, four years later, I got a brand new Maserati and, uh, Maria happened to have a Maserati in a picture that she showed me. And it was the same car she had taken a picture in front of it was the same car I appeared with when I got to wrestle my last match with homicide and homicide was the guy who's a real street criminal because he loves everybody. And he's so nice to everybody, but he's a fucking murdering bastard. If you fuck him and if you pick on the weak or you're a bully or you're a piece of shit coward and you want to go in the ring and stiff guys, homicide will get you on the street for real. There's a reason they call him homicide and he's a little fucking pit bull and he's one of the baddest motherfuckers I ever met. And he taught me a lot about respect and he was the one that opened the door for me. And instead of kicking the shit out of me, uh, the third, fourth and fifth time, he beat the shit out of me a few times and he saw me get back on the airplane and, uh, I shut my mouth and I never stiffed him back. Had a couple of promos about stiffing him back and this was a shoot and I tried to keep it looking real and, but it takes two guys to tango and it takes one guy to hurt a guy and it takes no skill to fucking punch a guy in the face that's letting you hit him. And that's the difference of real wrestling. Real wrestling is not about hurting anybody. It's about hurting fucking maybe uh, some guy in the audience that thought wrestling was fake or mixed up the reason of wrestling is fixed. And there's a reason wrestling is fixed because if you cut a cat's balls off, he's fixed. But to me, he's broken after that. So I didn't want to get my balls cut off, but I wanted to be fixed. We'll say in a capacity where someday the world trusts me enough to go on TV and they know my story. And I'm a guy that's taken prescription steroids since I was 33 years old. I have low testosterone levels. I got uh, lucky enough to get a few guys to tell me what to take and uh, how to do it properly. And I use the steroids to get uh, through some bad injuries that I have been lucky enough to, you know, overcome and not end up in a wheelchair. And I smoked marijuana because I was told marijuana was a, a plant that healed and uh, helped people uh, get along and brought people together and made food taste better and made things look cooler and see uh, 
the, you know, the, the more positive side of life. And that's something I try to practice uh, and preach and uh, practicing what you preach is a pretty important lesson. And uh, so at this age now, I have a beautiful potential wife that's asked me to marry her. And I really oh, wanted really? to get back into the wrestling business. Nice. Yeah, Marie asked me to marry her. That's nice. why I got pulled over in the car. I bedazzled the whole fucking thing with a bunch of rainbows and butterflies and fucking stars and stickers and United States flags. United States, the greatest country on earth, I still think. Yeah, you know, I love Canada, you know, but I, I mean, I love, I love the whole world, but I think the United States is the greatest country on the planet. And uh, we've done a really good job trying to spread this message that God bless America because the whole world to me is God and the whole world to me is America because America's got this thing called free choice. And you're going to be held responsible for your free choice. So my thing is to make the best free choices that I can possibly make and then be a guy you look back at and said, that motherfucker told the truth. And no matter what he ever got persecuted for, if you think I didn't make it in wrestling, guys, I got to have some of the greatest matches with guys before they became famous. And that was the coolest thing, like the Young Bucks. Those guys were fucking legends. I knew they were so good when they were kids. I had two of my best matches with the Young Bucks, the Briscoe brothers, unbelievable. Rich Swan, unfucking believable. AJ Styles, unbelievable. People say that I'm generic with my compliment, but you know what? Every guy you wrestle is a different type of guy, but there's no five star. Oh, God, who, whoever's been calling in is horrible. Who's this? Who's this? Oh, my God. Oh. I, I, I get it back. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, shit. What happened? Oh. Did we lose Teddy? Yeah, we lost Teddy for a second. Hold on. Fuck. Oh, what the fuck was his number again? Shit. <laughs> I don't think you want to put his number on the air, sir. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. We're in intermission here, folks. Okay. Life, and life's a test. And once you get <laughs> to that level, where now I'm at that level now where Love life it. is a test, and I think I've passed Love enough it. tests, and I've been nice enough to enough people Love on the street that you guys are going to put me on That's TV, right. and uh, it'll be probably Bret Hart opening up Stampede Wrestling again, and I'll be running Canada and running my own promotion, and I'll be bringing in AEW, and I'll be bringing in ROH, and I'll be bringing in Impact, and I'll be bringing in MLW, and I'm hoping to get NXT and... Uh, a few guys. My goal is to have the World Cup of Wrestling guys in Canada every two years. And I want to have every promotion that's basically uh, relevant and out there have their best guys come in and we do a World Cup of Wrestling and a Woodstock Festival where everybody can smoke weed and hang out. And uh, I won't say do mushrooms or do acid or anything crazy, crazy like that. But I mean, you can imagine what people are doing at a rock concert, watching U2 or, you know, watching Metallica or watching fucking, uh, we'll say some unbelievable rapper like Little Wayne or Kevin Gates and, uh, you know, all these unbelievable fucking guys out there that are role models. I want to get the best musicians in the world and the best athletes that ever wanted to try wrestling to get in the ring. And uh, I love Mike Tyson to come in the ring and be my partner. I wanted Master P years ago to get in the ring. I saw him play basketball, and I heard he bought a fucking huge bus for everybody, and the Toronto Raptors are going to have him play in the team. And I remember watching him in WCW, and he had all these fucking monsters walking around in the ring with him. I thought he was an innovator. So my job to me is to create some kind of wrestling channel and a wrestling show, and that exists now, and to create a competition that's basically the uh, most entertaining sport on earth with no rules, and anything goes. And uh, that would be the World Cup of Wrestling in the future, and that would be done in Canada, because Canada's still the only country that's got marijuana completely legally everywhere, and you can smoke that marijuana anywhere you, you want I, in Canada. You is it is it like a big... Uh, 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 you're a big proponent for it. Is it really that serious that marijuana is? And I'm I'm not I'm not gonna be this guy that sits there and tell you that that I'm a prude to it because I smoked it years ago and God I wish that I I, I could do it these days. Like, I'm a city worker here in New York. I've actually never but, had marijuana. No, uh, never, then you then you're missing out on a lot. <laughs> but is it <laughs> is it is it really like a a big thing? Because for me. I've always said that it helps a lot of people that don't understand how uh, uh, it, when it comes to um, diseases and 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 um, and lifestyles, it, it, it psych psychological, uh, mental health. It helps greatly. So what it, what is your big? You know, this is what I'm gonna say about marijuana. The guys I have the most respect for are the guys that do absolutely fucking nothing. 
that's the hardest thing. Like Tyson Kidd doesn't do anything. Harry Smith never smoked in his life. CM Punk never smoked in his life. There's a lot of guys that didn't need marijuana. They had enough perspective and discipline to get through it. And they understood what life was about. And they were more enlightened or maybe a little faster on the uh, draw. If it was a movie and it was a cowboy in a best what or in a country, uh, what's the, uh, in a Western movie, an old fashioned movie, they were, uh, they were the fastest guys with the gun. And it's the same thing with Austin Aries doesn't eat meat. They're American dragon. I heard a vegetarian too. And these guys are, uh, when I met them, very nice guys uh, outside the ring and some smoke weed and some don't, but I mean, it's marijuana is not the secret. It's the secrets to be nice to people and kill people with kindness instead of blindness. And instead of hate, love everybody. And if marijuana is what makes you love people, then fucking good. Smoke it and enjoy it. It's a plant. It's here for a reason. But the guys I respect are the guys that don't need anything. And uh, I quit smoking marijuana for a few years. I uh, got in a lot of trouble with uh, a few things in Texas uh, and uh, had a few weird uh, assault charges and uh, a few things happened with some girls and they, they kind of lied through their teeth and uh, put me into a situation where I had to stand in front of a judge and beg for my life and hope to God that I would get another day on the planet as a free spirit instead of locked behind bars. And uh, marijuana, just to me personally, it helped me get through things, but I don't actually push marijuana on anybody. I don't think anybody needs anything but fucking a cold glass of water and uh, a cup of tea, maybe with some honey in it. And uh, they need company and friendship and love and those are things that are going to be uh everlasting marijuana is something if it's there and you can use it for what it's supposed to be good for it's supposed to be something that heals your body and relaxes you and some people use it to get through work and some people use it to go to sleep at night and some people use it as a crutch and uh they probably don't understand that uh, again uh using something too much is usually not good i mean i smoked as much weed as i possibly fucking could for one year straight i smoked I smoked every day I wanted to smoke two ounces of the best different weed. So, I mean, I literally spent all of my wife's What's money it? one year. I think I spent over $800,000 for it? us to basically but get Teddy, all of the best marijuana strains. Teddy, Teddy I got to ask, though. Uh, like, I, in, 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 it's just it's just curtailing. It's curtailing to what I, I usually want to go to. It. It's like you show it and you're, you're very braggadocious about the, the, the marijuana thing. It's like. You, you you show it on YouTube. You show it on everything. It's like it's part of you. It's it's, it's, like, it's, it's part, part of you. Of um, do people not understand what it is, or is that maybe you should pull it back and be like, eh, maybe I shouldn't show people that I do this all the time. Marijuana was my excuse, guys, not to get on TV because I was scared shitless of the schedule. So marijuana was my fucking blanket to hide under, and I looked like I was smoking to be cool. I was smoking because I was scared. I was scared of Shawn Michaels. Okay. I was scared of Triple H. Okay. I was scared of Batista. I hadn't gone to the gym enough. I didn't do enough legs or free squats to be uh, to be someone that could walk in there and to look and feel like I was the guy that I was supposed to be. I had an image in my mind. And uh, I'll, I'm going to say this one time. I did some mushrooms one time, and I had a hallucination of what I looked like if I trained every day like fucking Batista did or if I like Triple H did or like uh, – Brock Lesnar did and I looked pretty good I was about 220 shredded and I looked like I was about 6'2 and I probably had a 12 inch dick in my mind and fucking imagination and fucking I I said that's the guy I want to be when I get on TV and until then I'm going to be blessed with wrestling for YouTube and I get to wrestle all the guys coming up but you know what most of the guys I wrestled I just wanted them to get to a level where financially they had security to feed their family and to be able to go on vacations and drive nice cars and most of these things I was bestowed with by my dad and all his hard work so now I have this image in my head and I got a wife like Maria who's going to kick my fucking lazy ass to the gym and punch me in the face if I have to be punched in the face or whatever it takes to get me to get the fuck out of bed and to get up in the morning, make my bed and do my push-ups and take the wrestling dream that I had at 40 years old and make it a reality because I want to be wrestling at 60 and I want to be in great shape for the next 20 years. Look at Billy Gunn. He looks phenomenal. Look at Al Snow. He looks unbelievable. Look at Vince McMahon. Look at Shane McMahon, dude, a billionaire, jumping off the cages, putting guys over, doing shooting star presses and a pair of fucking Jordans. Those guys are my fucking role models. Those guys are the kings. I'm a guy that's his king of his own castle, but I want to go to other castles now, and I want to play with other kings. I want to be a guy that's trusted now to go on TV and to follow a script when it's ready. And... Uh, I have a lot of work to do, guys. I got a six-month training schedule. I want to have one MMA fight. I want to have one pro boxing match. And I want to see if uh, 
I want to see if I can maybe play badminton or buy one shift as an NHL player. If I could get on the ice, I love hockey, guys. I always wanted to play one NHL game. If I could somehow buy an NHL team in the future and I could play hockey for just one game and drop the gloves and give a guy a big hug instead of knock his fucking teeth out, I think that would be fucking awesome. Maybe I could even sneak a joint onto the fucking ice and smoke a quick little blunt and blow it in the referee's face and kick kicked out of the kicked out of the NHL for fucking blowing secondhand smoke in a referee's face and getting them fucking all high. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, Teddy. But, Teddy, before I let you go, because I do, you you gave us a, a lot more time than that we asked for, and and I'm grateful for that, and I thank you for that. Well, you know what, guys? That's the one thing I always said was I try to give you more in the ring because that's the one thing I've always worked really hard on is being a hard worker in the ring. On the street, I'm kind of lazy. I sleep too much, and. Uh, <laughs> It's like no, a, it's like it's not. Cat. It's not time to sleep like anymore. Well, I'm like a cat. <laughs> but let me ask you, uh, well, just quickly, um, the, the arrest. Um, you, I know that you can't go too much in depth about it, but just um, your thoughts about it being being um, um, and remanded and, and being in jail. How was that? How was your your thought? Uh, your 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 whole. Uh, you know what? I, I, I've had some wonderful experiences in jail and some of the best days in my life were in jail. I hate to say it. I don't want to ever be locked up again. And it's a terrible thing to be locked up and away from your wife and have her worry about you and not get to see you and not get to cuddle you at night and to kiss you and to smell your hair and to see her smile when she wakes up in the morning. And, uh, but at the same time, I've met some of the nicest people in jail and I've met some people that were supposed to be racist or gang members or fucking, uh, because they're black or Mexican or they're white, they're not supposed to get along. And I say, everybody needs to eat. And if you're going to be in my jail cell, you better fucking eat and pray in front of me. And you better eat with your brother because I don't give a fuck what color you are. We're all fucking brothers on this planet. I don't give a shit what gang you're part of. We're all part of the gang called fucking human beings. And being a human being to me means understanding we got this fucking beautiful planet to live on. We got all these endangered species. And I think humans need to step the fuck up and uh, we need to save this planet. And my job is to set a goal and a reality show based on I want to open up an exotic petting zoo for endangered species. And most of my life, I've always wanted to be able to walk a tiger to the ring or I wanted to ride an elephant to the ring or I wanted to have a fucking red panda come to the ring and sit on the turnbuckle with my cat on his shoulders watching. And uh, I always loved how Davy Boy Smith and Dynamite Kid brought a bulldog to the ring. And I always wanted to bring a cat to the ring. And cats were supposed to be harder to train than women. And uh, women are pretty hard to train. And if you brainwash them with bullshit, they're going to fucking scratch you in the face. But if you treat them with love and kindness and respect, they might have a baby for you. And uh, then you have life and then you have your son and then you can have a daughter or a son. You can pass on a wealth of information. You can watch them grow and you can watch them live the life. You always wanted to potentially have, uh, you know, safe and sorry. And I don't want to be safe and sorry. I want to be safe. I don't want to be saying sorry anymore. I don't want to see people. I don't want to see people sad. I want to see people happy. I want everybody to love each other. I'm not a fucking uh, wild magician hippie, but I think this place is a, uh, you know, it's, I think this place is a wonderful, wonderful planet that God spent fucking millions of years creating this unbelievable world. And now science, technology, and God have allowed us to do all these things like have an iPhone or be able to do a podcast. I'm able to talk to the whole world on a speakerphone right now. Eventually, I'll be in a spaceship, and hopefully they can beam me up, Scotty, to another fucking level, and I get to go spend some time in India, and then five minutes later, I'm in Africa, and I can smoke a fucking joint with a guy in India, and then I can go over and maybe eat a nice meal with a guy in China. And uh, traveling the world's my goal, and saving the animals on the planet is my dream, and uh, having as many friends as possible on the planet that all love me and respect me because I was fucking real. Because time's real, energy is real, and money is real. And if you love those things and respect those things and understand loyalty and understand karma, uh, this is something that I'm going to try to do again for the next 20 years is this new style of living, which is to put smiles on people's faces and to hug people. I don't shake hands anymore. I only hug you. I don't want fans. I want friends and family. It's crazy. Excuse me. It's crazy because every time you see me, you always show me love. And, so, and, and you've always been... A guy that uh, you, it, it's weird because you probably don't know me by voice, but when you see me, you always show me love. And before I let you go, because you you did uh, way more than I thought yeah, that you honestly, would do tonight. Thank you. thank you for spending the time. Um, uh, uh, I have to say that thank you, thank, thank you, thank you for giving me time, guys. No, guy. I mean, please. Um, you are a a a talent that I always 
and I'm going to be honest with you, the way I thought that you should be bigger than you are, and I could see and I've heard why you're not. As Listen to what you just said, and you're exactly right. I should be bigger physically than what I am, and I know you didn't mean physically, but I, I am not allowed to go anywhere further than where I'm supposed to be right now, guys, because if I wasn't doing what I was doing right now, I would have just walked out of Virginia and I would have never met some of the best guys I met. And I met some of the nicest guys in jail this last thing, yeah. mostly all brothers. And they were so nice to me. They all watched my videos. They went onto the YouTube channel. Everyone had a tablet in jail and the jail was very clean. Everybody got along and they all got, they all got to call their girlfriends. And they said, we got this fucking wild motherfucker with sparkles in his hair, doing backflips and handsprings and handstand pushups. And uh, we want to know who he is. And after a few days, I was spreading with everybody. Spreading means eating with everybody. And I met some of the coolest guys in Virginia in jail. And I wanted to get the fuck out of there because I miss Maria. And I miss her beautiful lips. And I miss that fucking uh, smell of a real woman. But I also had to smell... I also had to smell the suffering of sleeping on the floor and picking a fucking. What a pussy whip man you are! I love that. I'm not, I will be. Uh, I love way. my. I love my wife, dude. I love my wife. <laughs> so um, let everybody know where um your your cause and where they can get you at and everything else. And, and Teddy, once again, I gotta thank you for for doing this for us. Or where they can get you at and what what's the cause that you're looking out for. Well, I think you guys are the ones that are gonna create this new channel, and I'd like to have Nightwave on as my first guest. <laughs> and I don't care about all the that negative energy. I don't. Awesome. I don't want to hear. I just. I just want to hear. I just want to hear how potentially uh, we're gonna work together. And he can talk all the shit he wants about me because you know what? That's his opinion. He's allowed to have it. And I'm not gonna say anything more than thank you for talking about me. Good, bad, or ugly. I'm gonna make you smile at the end of the day, and I hopefully make you laugh, and I make you remember my name. Teddy, I gotta tell you, um, the one thing that I look forward to is that I want to see that you are excelled in the business because people don't really understand how really talented you are. I've seen you in the ring. I've seen you personally and I've seen what you can be. And I would expect that uh, in the future that you're able to work with big promotion and big spreads because how talented you are and, and how uh, gravitated to the, the rest of the audience that you are. And I want to thank you Definitely thank you for spending the time that you, that you spent with us. Yeah, and it's, an honor, it's, 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 it's a privilege and honor. I've wanted you to be on a show for the longest, but I didn't know how to do this. But I'm, I'm grateful. Well, let's, let's, figure out how we, let's figure out how we can do a three-day-a-week show. Oh. And we can have donations that go to my new, my new basically, uh, my new innovation and my idea of creating this petting zoo in Florida for endangered species. And that's my sanctuary, guys. That's where I'm going to be living is I'm going to be living with the animals in the jungle. I'm not fucking Tarzan and I'm not fucking Aladdin and I don't have a magic lamp well, and I don't animal, have a flying will they, carpet. Will the animals smoke weed with you? Will they smoke weed with you? <laughs> you know what? I, I, can blow the, I can blow smoke in the general direction of an animal. If the animal decides that smoke, it's up to the animal. I'm going to blow the smoke and if the animal decides it wants to gravitate towards the smoke, then maybe it likes it. But I'm not going to hold somebody down and blow it in its face. But, you know what I mean? Because it take away its free choice then. And that's, to me, that's not cool. And you have to let people choose what they want to do. But, and you, have to, you can't tell someone what their favorite color is. And you can't tell someone what their favorite food is. And you can't tell someone what they need to see. You got to let them see it for themselves. And then they can tell you what they think. And then you can ask them what, uh, you know, if they care to hear what you think. And then you guys have a conversation. And again, some of the most important things you can ever have is a conversation, your meals, and say a prayer before your meal. And hope to meet people and hope to have friends, guys. The most important thing in my mind uh, is having friendship, love, and respect. And to have people that want to see you and to be missed. And when you come back, you put a smile on people's faces. It's real simple. I'm a hugger. Maybe not a kisser yet, but I think a kiss <laughs> on the cheek's pretty cool, too. So. Yeah, I'm definitely going to hug you next time. I know. You, 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 you've given me a kiss on the cheek before. I remember that. But, but I, yeah, I think I, I usually give the guys I like I like the guys usually give the guys a kiss on the shoulder. Usually I give the guys a little kiss on the shoulder, and that's my thing now. It's just a hug and a kiss. Excuse means the world to me, dude. And love is something that makes this planet go around a lot smoother than fucking hate. But you then, kill more people with kindness than you do with fucking uh, racism or fucking uh, ignorance. But Teddy, thank you once again for spending the time. I know you just came home, and it was that time that you know you're spending with your 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 lady. <laughs> Right now, you could be doing some extra shit, but you gave you gave us the time. And once again, um, 
um, I appreciate that you did that, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again. I have your number, and if you're if you're able to uh, uh, take my my calls, we're gonna do something. But um, I, I just want to say thank you guys for your donation. I really appreciate you guys being the first ones to donate to my shelter and to donate to my charity, and it means a lot to me that you guys are the ones that are gonna set up this uh, this new type of podcast or vlog or whatever we do. But it's all about getting money, guys, now, and the money goes to my char- to my charity and my shelter, and that's to make animals have a place that they're safe. And I want everybody to come visit me and hang out with me and to come down to Florida and enjoy WrestleMania this weekend. Or, I mean, not this weekend, this, uh, this next, I guess it's in a month and a half from now. Please, guys, understand uh, my message is really simple. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters on this planet. We need to all get along, and we all need to be more conscientious of pollution, and we all need to be more conscientious of saving people that sometimes you don't even see are out there. And sometimes it's the little guy. He doesn't make much sound, but if you don't notice him, uh, maybe down the road, then you don't get noticed yourself, and nothing's worse than being forgotten about. All right. Thanks again, as always. Thank you, Teddy, for all that, and we'll, we'll keep in touch. Have a good night, and give give all the love to uh, Maria and as such. By the way, Teddy. God bless you. Maria, I love you, baby. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> By the way, Teddy, I do a Canadian destroyer because of you, man. It's my tribute to you, bro. Oh, and one thing, guys. The Young Bucks got some brand new fucking dolls, though. They look absolutely fantastic, yeah, dude. Awesome. I just saw them. They sent me fucking beautiful. AEW, really, congratulations, guys, on coming in there and hitting a fucking home run. And uh, Triple H, thank you for creating NXT and a feeder system and getting all these wonderful guys on TV, dude. Vince McMahon, thanks for allowing us to live in your world of wrestling. Thank you, Teddy. And, um... Like I said, more power to you, and let's keep it clean, guy. Let's get let's make sure that we see you in the future where everybody can appreciate your greatness. Well, guys, I need to hit the gym, and uh, hopefully they uh, give me some leniency in Virginia. I got an ankle monitor on. I got some. Uh, I got a steroid charge and a marijuana charge to deal with now, and I'm going to put my life in the hands of God and the judge out there, and hopefully I get a fair decision and I get to go back to living my life with uh, with all you guys instead of being cooped up in a house here. But I did get to cook a nice meal tonight, and I got to see my cat, Purr. 